Welcome back to another episode of Five Drinks for Midnight. In the show, we bring the questions, guests bring the drinks. We try to wrap up before midnight. Today, we've been invited up to Grand Army Bar to talk to head bartender Patty Dennison. But before we do, like and subscribe, hit the bells, the whistles, leave a comment if you like what we're doing. Let's get started. Five drinks or midnight, five drinks, five questions, midnight, whatever comes first. How are you doing today? I'm doing, we're hanging out. Excellent, I'm so excited. Uh, I guess first, what are we drinking first? We are drinking my probably most ordered cocktail okay. and my way to start something. So I thought it would be a good first drink. Uh, it's a 50-50 Plymouth Martini with a grapefruit twist. All right, excellent. Yeah. Cheers. Cheers. Mm -hmm. oh. All right. Question one, a little bit of an origin story, okay. but how'd you get started in the hospitality business? I was a very sporty kid okay. and I got very injured Okay. and I couldn't sit down ever. And I was like, what am I going to do with my life? I enjoy cooking. My mom's really good at it. And I said, I'm going to go to culinary school okay. because it's very similar to sports where I can actively stand up for the entire day because <laughs> I don't want to sit down at a desk. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. And then, like, so culinary school, what got you into, into the bar business? Like, how, how did we end up in... So, the... I worked in kitchens. The, well, I guess the first day I'm at culinary school, the chef goes, why are you here? And I was like, well, I'm going to cook food and make people happy. And he laughed in my face. <laughs> and was like, you're never going to see the light of day of that in the kitchen. And I'm like, huh. I, you know, I professionally cook in kitchens. And I'm like, you are super bright. You're just, like, stuck in this box. And it kind of took the fun out of what I loved. I, frankly, I went to a, a different school after culinary school, and I was like, I'm going to go into consulting, I'm going to sell out, whatever. Yeah, yeah. They have this conference, and I bartended it for the weekend, and I was like, wait, this is like the happy medium. There you go. I can make drinks to make people happy, which is why I wanted to do this. You still get the creativity that you would get in the kitchen. You're still creating things. Okay. But you're like with a guest and talking to a person. I can talk to a brick wall for like maybe 10 hours. So <laughs> it, it's good that I have that ability now. Okay. And then you, so you're originally from Stone Mountain, Georgia, correct? I am. Yes. Uh, what brought you to New York? And then how did we end up here? Yeah. So, I mean, I guess I, there was only a couple of culinary schools that offered bachelor's programs. Okay. Um, and I love my parents dearly <laughs> and that was a stipulation and I said, totally fine. Uh, so I was looking at, uh, the CIA, the Culinary Institute of America and Johnson and Wales. Okay. I chose the CIA right. and I worked in New York most summers. I did my bachelor's at Cornell. We also had to work there. So I worked in New York most summers again. Uh, and then by that time my sister lived here. I was like, I, once you live in New York, it's hard to live in another city. I agree. Totally. And I got used to the lack of sustainability of my lifestyle and here we are. So how I got to Grand Army specifically, uh, my best friend, Allie was the beverage director. She helped train me to bartend at Blacktail and we okay. got along yeah. super well. And we were like, look, we need to work together again before we do this thing that we've wanted to do. We are. <laughs> In the process of opening a bar. Wow. Yeah. That's fucking awesome. Cool. Yeah. That's, that's great. I mean, and again, you were also, I mean, you kind of cut your teeth at Black, Black Tail. You mm -hmm. were also at Hawksmoor, correct? Yeah. So and I, I was, uh, Black Tail was like my first job out of college. I was a bar back there. Um, it was incredible. I like, I wouldn't be where I am today without everyone that works there. Like Will, the head bartender, him and Allie like helped train me, but every single bartender there like taught me something different and like really took me under their wing in a very cool way. And then I was going to go to Hawksmoor, the, the world ended. Yeah. And, you know, I took a little sabbatical. I got tan. I was in Florida <laughs> for a period of time. Nice. 
Um, yeah, and then I worked I worked at a restaurant called Aida in Clinton Hill. That was like during the pandemic. I started there. Um, it just like really like got to like bartend. I, all the training that I had had for like months at Blacktail that I never got to use. I then was able to like use it and it was really cool and fun. Um, and then Hawksmoor finally opened and I went there and was on the opening team there. I was there for like roughly a year to like okay. get here. Oh, fuck. There we go. I yeah. mean, I think that's an awesome origin story. Yeah. So um, cheers to that. Yeah, that's cheers. question one. And yeah. it's ripped off. Here we go. All right, question two, drink two. What are we drinking? So we're drinking a daiquiri. Excellent. A classic daiquiri. Very I nice. Started at Black Tails we chatted yeah. about, yeah. and I had to go back to the home. Very nice. Cheers. Cheers. Boom, boom. Mm. Yeah, I love a daiquiri. Yeah. It's probably my actual favorite cocktail. Why? It's just, it's, I love rum okay. so much. So much. <laughs> so we we have a white rum blend at Grand Army that we use to add a little bit of funk. There's uh, a little bit of agricole and like overproof Jamaican rum in it. Right. But it just like it's so refreshing. It's so delicious. It's also one of those drinks that kind of has a bad rap. Okay. People are thinking of that like stereotypical like we're using frozen lime juice. <laughs> it's a frozen drink. Right, it's right. really sweet. But like especially the weather to, right now, like yeah. this is what I want to drink. Yeah. No, I, absolutely. And tomorrow is National Daiquiri Day. Exactly. So, uh, dogs and dads. There you <laughs> go. Perfect. Um, all right. So question two, you're uh, known for kind of flipping the script on cocktails. You have a Sazerac Sour, you yeah. have a malt, well, and then the, the cocktails here. So how, you not looking for industry secrets yeah. or anything, or like uh, the secret behind your madness, but you know, we're like at Willy Wonka in the, the chocolate yeah. factory right now. Do you guys, come up with the cocktails and then the theme or is there a theme and then the cocktails there's a theme and then the cocktails okay and that's the thing now that i think is like positively the most challenging thing is like especially with the grand Ole Opry, i wanted us to have a really sussed out thorough theme okay and then every drink to like really be inspired by something or like tie into it which is hard right um so that was like fun and challenging we can't do that with every menu theme, right, right. obviously I mean, there was ways in Mean Girls where we were still able to tie it to the name, but we were, it was getting creative. Yep. Um, but yeah, so it's, it's menu theme first. We're like in the process of doing that right now. Okay. And then, and then drinks come after that. And then, so, uh, like what is the R and D for like something like that? Like yeah. do you guys do, like if you have, let's just say a daiquiri on, mm -hmm. like, do you do like multiple variations and then this is the you're not looking for like cost effectiveness, oh, no, but yeah. like, it's like, is this is the one and like, you keep going or yeah so basically it... i mean i think the great part about grand army is we do a very similar r d that we did at blacktail okay. which is so ali is the most organized person on this planet which is super great that we work very closely together so roughly two to three months out for a menu uh the bartender's not mandatory at all okay um we meet uh once a week and we just like go through the drink okay. so for this menu, I wanted as much bartender representation as possible. Okay, awesome. So it's kind of like, yo, what style do you want? Everyone gave me a style and I was like, great. I would love a drink in that style for the okay. menu. Present whatever. Um, and then we have like little rules, you know, like we're not gonna like spend a two hour R&D session on one drink, like sure. that's silly. It does happen occasionally. Mm -hmm. But, but we, we try not to make it more than four times. Okay. Like, your palate's gonna get fucked. Yeah. Like it's just like by the end it's like, what if I had a banana? <laughs> Maybe we shouldn't. Um, but yeah, super organized. We're going to make it. Um, I think the best part too, and like what I rely on a lot when making cocktails is just other people. Okay. Getting everybody together, everyone's palate's different, right? Like I think this daiquiri is beautifully balanced. I agree. Some people might think it's too sweet and that's cool. Yeah. But like, Fuck it's them. yeah, right? <laughs> and it's like when you get, you know, the six people together, everyone's trying it. Yeah. Everyone has a different opinion in a way that I think we all can like agree on something together. All right. So then uh, one of the also things is uh, I've been told uh, from our social stalking, I mean, research mm -hmm. that we did on you is that you are a very fierce competitor. Maybe it goes back <laughs> yeah. to your, uh, your sports days, yes, but um, um, what is like your preparation then for cocktails like when you go into like a competition? That's a psychotic version of oh, myself. Okay. Uh, not always the best version of Patty yeah. and that's okay. <laughs> uh um, but yeah, so I mean, it, basically with cocktail competitions, right? It's all about the brand. Right. It's about whoever I'm doing it for. You know, I just did the Cointreau win and it's like, 
I need to make, it, it was, I need to make a margarita about Cointreau. Like Cointreau is the star of this margarita yeah. when sometimes tequila is or sometimes well, maybe lime is or whatever. Um, but yeah, tying it back to the brand. Also, I'm not like the most off the cuff speaker. Okay. So I do like to make a heavily written kind of script so that okay. I, I do try to memorize as much as possible. Um, I don't always get there and then I have to kind of like shoot the shit a little bit and that can go one of two <laughs> ways. <laughs> um, and there's also a lot of bad things. Like, you never know what's going to happen in a cocktail comp. Right. And especially when you're presenting live, and I think that's why I like it because it is like a sports thing. Yeah. I love, like, I hate everything around the competition. It stresses me out. I get so stressed. The 10 minutes that I'm presenting are like pure bliss. It's so fun. I love it. It's like the high of doing it. It's so exciting. The, when I did the Woodford one, one of the guys was like, you've like, you've had it now. Like, you get it now. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, I do. I do. It's like, it's like, I don't want it to be fun, but like it is. Um, but yeah, but I mean with that, it's, and that's also like when I do comps, I have everybody here to try my drinks. Okay. I'm not going to, I'm not going to make it just for me. I'm going to like, you know, have Carson who's from South Georgia, try the drink and I'm, I'm going to have, you know, Sam who's from Florida and I'm going to have Allie from Long Island, like all these people from different places try them and give me their opinion okay. because it's only going to help me. Sure. Yeah. Uh, do you have a height song that you play? Like again, if you're going into a competition, is there a height song? Yeah, it's really weird. Um, it's uh, from the Lizzie McGuire movie soundtrack. <laughs> the Vitamin C remix of Volare really pumps. <laughs> yeah, I can't explain that at all. But I, it's like an ongoing joke, and some of my friends know it, and they'll be like Volare, and I'm like, yeah, like. Okay. It like gets my mind in All right, place. excellent. And then, uh, why do you hate garnishes so much? I think a <laughs> lot of the times it's just a waste. Okay. I think something that like I've been cognizant with and like working with more people is just like, how can we like be like as sustainable as possible? Okay. Especially it's like kitchens. I feel like people are doing a good job with that, but in the bar world, we forget about it. It's like, look, like how many cases did we get yesterday? And how many boxes did I break down? And how much cardboard <laughs> was already there? Right. It's like if I can like minimalize the garnish use I'm going to. I also want them to be functional. So I'm like, like for instance, the martini, right? We had a great Greek twist yeah, on there. Yeah. That added something to the drink. Also great for girls are weird and they kind of numb your tongue, but I like yeah. it. Um, but it's like, I want it to add something. Okay. Um, I also just like, like the look of like a sexy clean drink. Gotcha. Just it's aesthetically Perfect. pleasing for me. And then our last question that turned into a rapid fire, but uh, where did your love of carbonation actually come from? Will Pasternak, <laughs> that, that man, he worked at existing conditions. I don't know. I really like club soda. It could be when I was in high school, I stopped drinking soda because I wanted to be healthier because I was playing too many sports. Gotcha. Um, but I just like, I love, like we were talking earlier, like I love spicy water. Yeah. Like I want the zip <laughs> on my tongue. I like, I just drink so much of it. We had a bartender here the other day. Michael comes up to me and he goes, I've learned one thing about you. It's that you like carbonated water. And I was like, how many club sodas have I had during this shift? Like, <laughs> yeah. I don't even want to mention it, but yeah, I don't know. Maybe I find it more refreshing, even though maybe it isn't, but I, it's just, I like it. I want things to like hurt a little bit because they're so carbonated. <laughs> do you have a special, like, do you have a favorite thing that you, other than water, that you like to carbonate? Um, I don't know. That's hard. I mean, I think just like any way that we can fully carbonate a cocktail is like cool because okay. it's, and then like going like back when you get like, a gin and soda, for instance. I don't like tonic. I hate it with a burning passion. <laughs> but like you get a gin and soda, right? And you put the two ounces gin in the soda and it's like, eh, this is like lightly carbonated. Right. And then you mix gin with some water and carbonate it. And it's like, this is so crispy and refreshing and delicious. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I guess I'm on this weird hill that I'm dying on right now of like trying to make sodas. Okay. Um, and so trying to like bake those and carbonate those, which is like also challenging because like we're clarifying things. Some things foam, some things don't. It can be very annoying. Our soda right now does foam up a little bit. Okay. I feel bad for the bartenders that have to carbonate it and myself. Like I also do it, but it's just like, yeah, I don't know. I, anything really. Okay. Any, all right. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Well, there we go. That's question two. Cool, so Papa. cheers. Cheers. Boom, boom. Wow, turn this into a snack. I love something. a little snack. It's no, it's good. We're on to the next drink, right? Yep. Question three, drink three, what are we drinking? So this is the I'd Like to Buy a Val Pack. Okay. Uh, it's now on Grand Army's <laughs> Greatest Hits. Uh, it was my first drink on the menu, like on a Grand Army menu. 
so that it'd be cool to bring it back, but it's the Shaken Sazerac meets Jungle Bird meets Cacao. It's a very like bartendery drink, um, but it's cool. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, well, cheers. Cheers. Fuck yeah. Oh, I love uh, her. That is awesome. Yeah, she's a pretty girl. It, it, this is another like R&D we were talking about earlier. It was so cool to see where this started and it was psychotic <laughs> and to see the beautiful drink that it became. <laughs> oh, that's a gorgeous thing. That is, I mean, the color just, oh, yeah. yeah. It, it used to have a quarter ounce of Peychaud's bitters in it and it was like a split of maybe like Applejack and rye and it was like the most like intense punch you in the face. And then instead we used um, Campari and Japanese whiskey and Kapali cacao, and it became this like nice, pretty, soft, like, like tasteful drink instead of this like I'm a crazy person trying to make cocktails. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome, though. I mean, that's yeah, just oh. yeah, yeah. But I, I I really like where it ended up. I did a couple months ago. I made the first iteration of the drink that I actually presented when I was at Hawksmoor, and they were like, "This is cool, but like this is really weird," and I was like. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, and then I came here and we like fully like sussed it out together. And I think uh, the team helped me make this into the drink, and everyone contributed and, and made it much better in a good way. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's gorgeous, like that. Yeah. It's just ah. Oh. All right, so question three. We call this our talking shit segment because okay. we've had three drinks already, cool. so we're yeah. able to feel it a little bit better. Yeah, we're we'll get a little loose. Uh, but in the vine pair article which you were named 2023 bartender of the year congratulations thank you so much mm -hmm. uh, you had a statement towards the end where oh, no. cocktail bars aren't that fun anymore yeah okay yeah and, i stay, i stick with that one yeah, uh, can you explain yeah no I, I mean i think look like for me personally right I bartend because of people. Yep. My goal is genuinely just, I hope that I make someone stay better every day. That is the only goal. Yep. And if I, and like, hopefully I can do something that makes someone stay a little bit better every day. You've succeeded right. today. Yeah. So yeah, I'm cool. much happier. That's great. Then. It's bartending. It works out really well. Um, but yeah, no, so like, that's my goal. Okay. And I think like, it's the whole like, take what you do seriously, yep. but don't take yourself too seriously. I was here last night and stood on the bar and gave people laybacks. Like, yeah. Chelsea was like, I always have to bend down. And I was like, why don't we sit on the bar? And then it was just like this. But I think we're in this world right now where there's so many places and people are just taking themselves so seriously. Mm. And it's like, let's chill out. Like, why do we do this? I want to write really dope cocktails too, right? Like, it's like, we can talk about the agar clarification and the forced carbonation and sure. whatever. But also like... You can just sit here, have a good time, and I can make you cocktails, and we can, like, shoot the shit, and, like, I don't know. I just think that, like, there's so many places, and I'm like, yeah, I want this to be fun, and it's like, I feel kind of uncomfortable right now, yeah. and I'm someone who can, like, be a high row low brow person, um, but, yeah, I don't know. I think it just for me personally, the goal, it's about people, sure. and that's, like, the number one thing, and I think a lot of just bars in general or like losing kind of track of like what the actual kind of like why what is hospitality right like why do we do this no i, I agree with you and uh, do you think that um like people take themselves a little too seriously yeah. and i mean more on like the customer this side of the bar yeah. the customer side and i think COVID ruined that for a lot of people yeah because you, you had a lot of fucking idiots sitting there going my old fashioned is better at home. Right. Well, then why the fuck are you yeah, here? Go home. Well, go and home and have it. Cool, yeah, yeah. Right? Like, yeah. And you're also, you're pouring like six ounces of whiskey and uh, yeah, something. Yeah, you're, you're making that with that Instagram video of the viral of the lady making it a pint glass. Yeah, yeah, yeah <laughs> exactly. Um, do you think that cocktail bars are kind of rebounding a little bit back to like that golden age of 2006 where like New York was like that, uh, like, thing of cocktail yeah. culture or i mean i think just even this summer right we're at the point at least for grand army that we would start getting a little slower and like we're still kind of busy yeah i think people especially this summer and it's like hot as fuck yeah like there's days where i'm like i don't want to leave my apartment <laughs> exactly. and you know i have to come to work and like we're full people are sitting outside and i'm like that's crazy it's 90 degrees <laughs> outside and you're like why are you doing this but also like happy to have a table out there for you but why, why? yeah um I think now, finally, we're at the point where people are, like, ready to, like, pop off. Yeah. Like, they're trying to, like, have a summer. Yeah. Um, I think some people are staying in New York, which is cool, because, like, New York in the summer is, like, a special kind of people. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, yeah, no, I think that, like, we're finally getting to that point. I do think, like, COVID 
obviously like did a lot of shenanigans yep, yep. and changed things. Yep. I do think in a positive way, a lot of more guests like have a lot more information, which again, like if we want to talk about stuff, I'm so happy to, but if you don't want to talk about stuff, I'm also Good. so happy to not. Um, but it's fun. I think like with doing some of these cocktail competitions, it's super culturally different how guests are. And it's been like, it's really interesting that like a lot of Americans are like, they actually like know what some of the whiskeys are and yeah. they know what some of the stuff is and they have this knowledge and they will ask you questions and it's not like that everywhere. So I guess like, even though maybe it's a little weird, I guess we're lucky that I'm in this environment that it, it's still like the kind of weird is maybe better than it is in some places. Okay. I don't know. All right. Uh, and then I guess, what does Grand Army do to bring the fun? So, I mean, again, from you know, Dax and Dogs to like the right. venue. I mean, how would you classify the level of fun? Here? Yeah, I mean, I just I just chatted with someone actually about kind of like the menu theme, and I can't take credit for menu themes. Like, I, I believe that Damon has been doing like was doing them like since the bar opened. Um, but I think that like that immediately like makes it so it's like silly. It's hopefully something that can be like some people are going to relate to. Like themes can be anything, yeah, right? We've yeah. had a Nicholas Cage venue theme, <laughs> you know. We've had Oklahoma State Parks. Yeah. It could be anything, uh, but I think it kind of rips that bandaid off immediately. Of like, okay, it's it's a Grand Ole Opry theme menu. Our last venue theme was Mean Girls. You know <laughs> yeah, what I mean? Yeah. Like, like, calm down. It's okay. <laughs> um, I think also like we're this really dope environment of highbrow lowbrow, and that's why I love Grand Army yeah. so much. Is that you know, like we have Malibu in a cocktail. <laughs> Like, you know what yep. I mean? We have Malibu in a cocktail and we also have this like incredible toasted coconut distillate that Mash with Banks for us. <laughs> so it's like this like silly, th it's like, you know what? It needs this like real coconut, but it needs a little artificial. Right. All right. And like kind of where we can bring that together. And I think I'm also lucky just because like we have like owners that kind of like in a positive way are like, y'all are doing the right thing and it's working, yeah. like just do, do it. it. Um, but yeah, I also think that like, I'm lucky. This is a bar, like everyone gets along. Yeah. We're all friends. Yeah. We like hang out outside of work, which is really cool. Yeah. And like, I like we've been lucky enough to just like find people that are like kind and nice and like can shoot the shit and like nobody is like a pretentious asshole, right. frankly. And that's important. I don't know. Um, but yeah, I think the menu theme like immediately helps. Okay. I also think I intentionally try to rate the menu in a way that's like really approachable. Like we're not gonna put like crazy shit. Like that there might be one or two things that you might immediately not know. Sure. We had fig leaf in a cocktail in the last menu, and people were like, fig leaf, and I'm like, oh, it actually kinda tastes like coconut, which is cool. Um, but they're like, it's we're not gonna put some sort of like obscure thing on the menu. Right. And then we all have the information to talk about the obscure thing, but you're not gonna read the menu and be like, huh. Um, I also think look, my 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 best friend, my childhood best friend Carly from home. Uh, we go out a lot. We drink really differently, right? Like we have really different go-to drinks and going out with Carly has been so positive for me because it's like, look, like Carly likes a vodka soda, which is great. You know, she likes like things that I don't typically really? drink and it's kind of branched me out to be like, look, like not everyone's going to want the, this yep. and that's okay. But like, we're always going to have like a dope drink that Carly's going to like on our menu. Cause that, and I guess that's, I'm now, I'm talking a lot. No, nope, I love it. I'm bringing myself back into like the accessibility of just genuinely having drinks. I don't drink a lot of vodka, right? But like you need a drink for the vodka drinker. Yeah. And we, oh, uh, it's okay. Um, and, and so like making that, and like we do, it's, it's <coughs> one of Grand Army Greatest Hits. It's one of Robbie Dow's drinks, but it's like the moon and sky is just beautiful. And we put Pisco in it, right? Yeah. We put a little bit of something that we're introducing into something new. But it's a vodka pisco, apricot sour with some sparkling wine. Like, is a banger. It's the cocktail that I'm like, you will like this, okay. right? Like, I know people are gonna like the Moon and Sky. It's delicious. We have the clothes fall off in our new menu. Um, it's a spicy mango margarita. Okay. It's like I know people are it, and like look, like we're using mango three ways, two tequilas, lime three ways. Okay. It's a really cool, thoughtful, spicy margarita. But at the end of the day, it's a spicy mug. Yeah. Um, but it's like still having those accessible cocktails on the menu and not just like only doing things that are like geeky and bartender bullshit. Yeah. Um, and I think that's another way that it's like, some people are like doing just like crazy shit and everything's crazy. And it's like, but like, what about Carly? Yeah. Like she's not going to feel safe, like not safe, but like she's not going to feel comfortable in your bar. Right. And like, I want it to be a place where every single person can come in here. They can hopefully 
everyone can find a drink on the menu they'll like. But if not, like, I, look, I made somebody a Malibu and milk one time. And I'm not kidding. I mixed Malibu with milk and put it on ice for this man. He was like an 80 year old man. And I'm like, I don't care. Yeah. If that's what you want, it wasn't that bad. Was he from the Midwest? I think so. That's a, yeah, it's yeah, a, it's it a was such a, yeah, I'm like, this is great. I was like, what the fuck am I doing right now? It was like a busy Saturday yeah. and I'm like, I guess I'll go get the handle of Malibu. We have downstairs, <laughs> like maybe we have milk. We don't yeah, always yeah, have yeah, milk no. in house, but yep. that's kind of where it's like, yeah. look, just give to people what they want. Yeah, Malibu, blue curacao and milk. Wow, good yeah. to know, I'll have something blue next time. Yeah, yeah, to make it more exciting. Yeah, there you go. I shook it, which was a mistake, because the milk foamed up foam, so yeah, much. Yeah. So I had to make it again, but we eventually, I nailed down the milk. All right, perfect. Yeah. Um, when you do go out, because again, what is like your go-to drink? Like, okay. not at Grand Army, where but you're out with friends and you're just yeah. like, what is your... So the, I'm in, in the classic bartender realm, and what you will see when we get to drink five is my uh, maybe most commonly ordered, not cocktail, but beverage. Okay. I drink a lot of beers and shots. That's what I was going to say. I'm a stereotypical bartender. Yeah. Uh, but I will say, like, if I'm going out to dinner, the 50-50 martini we had at the beginning, okay. I don't order a grapefruit twist in public because I feel like too much of an asshole. <laughs> I get a, a lemon twist. I'm like, if I'm a homie with the bartender and I can see a grapefruit, maybe I'll do it. Yeah. But um, that's, like, a good first drink for me. Lots of beers and shots. I have been drinking a lot more Negronis than okay. I ever thought I would. White Negronis are like near and dear to my soul. Okay. But I've been drinking a lot of like classic Negronis recently. Okay, excellent. Yeah. Well, there we go. Question three. We didn't talk that much shit. So pop, pop. Pop. <laughs>
I also, like, after I graduated from Cornell, I, like, studied wine and had my certified sommelier thing. And I'm like, I literally can't get a job bar back in New York City, which was, like, honestly really good for me to, like, get that, like, holy shit. And unfortunately, Will saw my resume and a stack of resumes. I called, like, 25 of the best bars in New York City just trying to get a job. Um, I think just, like, reaching out to people. I think, and it's also, like, look, if you want to get into this and you want to do this, so many people want to give like I'm we have a server right now Sam and she was like I don't learn how to bartend and I was like look like I will happily teach you how to bartend like so many people want to give it's just about asking sure and I think I have a lot of trouble asking for the things I want and so it's like look if you want to do this and you want to work if you just ask people might be like yeah true right. like people will just say yes in a way that you we even like you know like people run into each other here and it's like the beautiful thing about Grand Army is like a lot of like, we'll say relatively well-known beverage people will come here. A lot of bartenders come here, which is super cool. I, I, there's nothing more flattering than being a bar that a lot of bartenders like, yeah. like that is like the utmost compliment. Um, and it's like, you never know who you're going to run into at a bar and who you're going to meet. And if they say, Hey, come in for a trail, like follow up, yeah. like go in for a trail. I just think that like, if you ask, there's been people, there's, there's not a lot of people that went to Cornell that actually are bartenders. <laughs> um, I think that like, you know, hotel administration is the major, it's hospitality. Everyone goes into like financial consulting sure, now sure. or real estate. Yep. It's not, hospitality is loose. Yeah. Uh, but you know, there's a couple like unicorns, right? Okay. And you know, one of my other friends, Max is like maybe the only one of like the other four people I know that I graduated with that are in operations. <laughs> so, um, but I, yeah, I think just like asking, going to your favorite bar, asking the bartender, like, look, like, I really want to do this. I just want to learn. Like, offer a trail. Okay. Like, if you just like ask, like, I don't care. You can shadow me for a day. Like, what the fuck? Okay. Like, that's fine. It's nothing. It's a little bit annoying. I'll be transparent. <laughs> but, but it's like, it's, I'm happy to like teach you a couple things. Okay. You know, there's like silly documents I have that are helpful, but it's, it's just going and like, actually like speaking up for yourself and okay. asking. Awesome. Yeah. Well, there we go. Press well, four. Pop, pop. There we go. Cheers. Cheers. So we're on to the last one. Question five. Drink five. Last drink of the night. What are we drinking? Sorry. Okay. Sorry. No. Okay. Okay. <laughs> um, last drink of the night. Grand Army Classic Boilermaker. Okay. So this is uh, Narragansett Light. Okay. Um, which is funny because most places are just Narragansett, but ours is Narragansett Light. All right. Um, and a shot of Hard Start, which is Damon's beautiful creation. Equal parts uh, for Net Rock and Rock and Menthol. All right. Maybe. Perfect. Yeah, I guess we'll rip the shot first. Is that, is that yeah, how That's, do we do yeah, it? Yeah, we'll do it here. Yeah. Just shot it first and then. Yeah. And it's, I, I love Hard Start. Yeah, like, I'll say it. It's a crystal little beer, yeah. Yep. I drank too much Fernet when I was a 21 year old bartender okay. at a bar back trying to be cool. Yeah. And I didn't drink it for a long time. All right. And I started working here. And when you add the Bronca Menta, that's like a little bit sweeter yep. um, and a little bit mintier, I can like actually consume this now. All and right. I enjoy it. All right. Um, and I maybe drink too much of it. Okay. okay. That's all right. Yeah, yeah. It totally works. Yeah. yeah. All right. So question five comes out of the flip of the Whiskey Wednesday coin. You can flip it, you can spin it. You can do whatever you want. Okay. One side says fuck yeah, one side says fuck no. So again, uh, cool. you don't have to answer, but please feel free to answer if you yeah. feel inclined. But cool. So, I'm gonna spin it. All right, cool. Yeah, that feels like a cool. I feel like this is a like a big coin. So all right. It's still safer. Uh, so question five: Is this better than real estate? Do I answer it now or do I wait? You can spin it and then I'm gonna do, answer it right. anyway. But I'll spin it and see. Oh wow, I like pretty good. Says fuck yeah. Cool. So it's um, right. Yeah, it, it's so much better. <laughs> yeah. I never like I. So I had a real estate minor going into my um my senior year of college. Uh, that I did drop my senior year of college. Uh, that I had to take the hardest class in the hotel school. Okay. It was also at eight a.m. and I was like, it's my last semester. What did you get? Uh, I dropped it. I've never like. Oh, look, I. I fucked my foot up in high school. I was going to play sports in college and I couldn't because I had a serious injury and I have never been more grateful for anything happening in my entire life. I think everything happens for a reason. I am like exactly where I want to be. I'm opening up a bar with my best friends. 
Like, that's, like, it's all, like, I think I've made a lot of, like, decisions, right? Like, going to Cornell and then choosing to be a barback right. when I had a lot of other very lucrative job opportunities after college. I think my parents have been, like, what the fuck are you doing? And then they've also been, like, wait, no, I get it now. Yeah, yeah. And they're so, like, genuinely, like, I couldn't ask for more beautiful people. There you go. It could be because my dad's a lawyer and my mom's a CPA. Okay. And, like, the idea of having like their fun daughter working in a bar is like cool. Um, and maybe they're vicariously living through me, but yeah, I'm, thank God. Right. It really, like, I like, I, 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 look, I like finance. It's fun yeah. in a way that like the fact that I'm saying finance is fun is crazy. Yeah. I like math. Um, I excel sometimes like when I do the things of like update inventory sheets and do the costing for the menu, I'm like, Oh, I kind of love this. But I'm also like, you know what I really love when like, I found out the other day that the the guy that we're doing the Dax and Dogs things with this month, his wife goes to the same dentist as me. All right. And I was able to find that out in, <laughs> in a conversation, like a 30 minute conversation I have with someone. I'm just like, wow, what a crazy day. See? Like, what? Like, I just like, I love doing this. Yeah. I get like, it's just like, I don't know. I, I talk a lot. So no, but cool. that, honestly, <laughs> though, like, I think that I think one of the, the most noble professions is bartending because again, you are so many things for so many people. Yeah. Like, I mean, again, you're a real estate agent, you're a doctor, you're yeah. like a psychologist, yeah, you're, you're yeah. connector of people. Like, you guys bring everything together. Like, you're be like, hey, this guy over here is, you should meet that guy. Like, right. you are a connector of people. Or you should yeah. be like, no, you should go get that checked out. No. That's really bad. And it's too. cool. And I think one of, like, the, one of my good friends said that he'll die behind a bar. And I'll, like, I'll, I'll die hard yeah. I, I love it so much. Like, there's any, like, with Allie and I opening up the bar, it's like, we, we both of us still want to be, like, so involved. Yes. I, and I think that it's, like, obviously, like, you have to be less involved in a period of time, right, yeah, for, right. like, sustainability of your life. Sure, sure. But it's, like, I just love bartending. Yeah. Like, it's fun. No, that's... A- My shoulder hurts a little bit. I don't <laughs> love that. Yeah. Uh, but, like, besides that, it's, like, it's cool to meet so many people. You meet so many interesting mm-hmm. people. You meet, like, it's, like, somebody I went to high school with in, in Stone Mountain, Georgia. My mom does his parents' taxes, which just over last summer, I walked into work, Jonathan Jarrett is, is sitting it? outside, <laughs> and I'm like, hey! <laughs> and he's like, Patty? And I'm like, Jonathan? Like, I'm like, I haven't seen you in 10 years. Yeah. And he's like, what's up? And I'm like, you're at my bar. Yeah. <laughs> I, like, I run the, the beverage program here. And it's just like, what? Like, I don't know. And it, it's cool that like those things can happen. You're just like working in in the industry. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, there we go. Five things down, five questions answered. Patty, thank you so much for having me again. Yeah. Until we can drink together again. Cheers. Cheers. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah. Cheers. Mm-hmm.